Welcome to Burning Metal uh, Monthly Roundup. Jesus Christ, I'm great off to a great start there. The Burning Metal Roundup for the month of August. And I'm joined again this month We're back with Adrian Williams, uh, the Irish metal maniac, who also has a segment on Metal Messiah Radio, which will be going live tonight at 2 a.m. How's things, man? I'm doing vlogs. Yourself? To be honest with you, man, we've had a bit of a fucking mixed bag of a month. A big, mm. big bit of a mixed bag of a month, and the biggest mixed bag of it was that I was unceremoniously cut off my carers allowance four weeks ago. Oh. And I got a letter today telling me that my claim wasn't going to be processed because apparently everything was fine. My mother is severely disabled. But anyways, let the, right once the doctor and everyone today and everything is getting sorted the letter is already there for collection tomorrow but that means a potential of four weeks without any income like that's two months like jesus christ yeah man it's it's not a fucking happy time i'm all right now man because but earlier on today man i was fit to fucking kill like you know i was i couldn't believe it i was like what Why? Yeah. what what what's this about but Look, and I'll get back to you. I've got all this, everything lined up, and I've got everything again, but it's still, it's very fucking frustrating, like, you know, when you, you know, there's people out there acting the bollocks on social welfare all the time, and then there's somebody who legitimately is a fucking care, like, I'm still have to do the job, even if I get paid or not, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, but sure, look at, that's been my fucking months, unfortunately. It's just been one of those months, man, where I just, things just didn't go my way, but... Uh, look, it could, could be a good thing, you know, clear off a lot of fucking subscriptions and stuff. And, you know, if you find you find you subscriptions, you can be signed up to 10 things and not know it. And next thing you'd be money trickling away. So they're all gone now. So a bit of a, a, bit of a great reset for myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, enough about me and my fucking woes and fucking anger issues that I had earlier on today. But. We'll kick off the monthly roundup, and it's been another really, really busy month again. We've had 22 releases in August, which is fucking crazy, man. August is usually quiet. Like. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking... There was a, a dip there for the last week or so, but yeah. um, beforehand, are just fucking they're coming from everywhere. Yeah. Well, there was a few that dropped near the end of the month, which we'll get into later, of course, but... Uh, First off, we'll kick off with Abaddon Incarnate, who have released their long-awaited album, The Wretched Sermon, and also dropped a video this month, which you won't be able to see if you're watching this, but it's for a track, Killing Spree, so we'll play a minute of that there. And if you haven't watched this before, we play a minute of every song of each, of each track we play, just to mean it doesn't go on for three hours. And here we go. Give it a minute there, and the album got a great reception in the end, didn't it? You know, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's well deserved as well, man. It's great, great piece of great piece of work, I have to say. It's, uh, it's, it's up there with a deer, yeah, de definitely, definitely. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about any live dates as of yet, but I suppose we've covered in previous roundups, you know, Steve and uh, the drummer are based in the UK. and Irene and Bill are based in Ireland, so it's not that awful simple, but but I assume they'll do something probably yeah. soon enough, I'd say. Yeah. And on a slightly different note, have you been noticing lately, man, all the tours that have been cancelled? Yeah. It's scary, man. I've been looking into this, man. 
I've been looking into it the last few days because I'm not surprised. I I could see this I could see this coming because well, the, of the, whole the, the biggest factor is the lack of buses. Yeah, there's no buses available. Like, and I was watching uh, your man Herman Lee. He is uh, he's his own podcast, and he said that, that when the, when they were doing the festival season with Dragon Force, they had to hire a lorry to bring all their gear around in, and they were just the lorry was going from place to place, and they were flying from place to place. It was the only way they could do it because they couldn't get a bus with a trailer on it. Fucking hell. They arrived at Hellfest 10 minutes before they were due to play. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and like uh, fucking Antrax have cancelled their European tour. Yeah, that's right. They're only playing England. Yeah, and all these, all these European bands are cancelling. Like uh, Moonspell cancelled their American tour 10 days out. Like. Jesus Christ. Like, man, they've, they've probably lost about 20 grand doing that because you've got to get the visa, which is about 10 grand, I believe, for European bands to get into America. And up to this floor, plus in, they've obviously printed merch and everything like. Fucking hell! Yeah, man, it's a. I've been. It's it's it's, it's a fucking and like you know after bands like they had the whole fucking virus situation, and now this is happening where they can't go on tour like because there's no way of going on tour like this is. You know it's a it's it's scary like for mid level bands you know. I know. Because uh. I seen uh, Overdrive put up a piece about it, and Oren put up a description about how bands they basically make their their cut to break the break even around three quarters of the way through the tour because you have to pay all the advance money. Yeah. So if they can't, it's obviously got to the point now where they can't even do that, like in fuel costs and everything, and can't get a van. Like it's just Jesus Christ. It's a fucking it's another. It's a kick after a kick, isn't it, for the industry? Like that's. Uh, Anthrax are fucking big fucking bands. And oh. before we move, move on for this now in a second, we just want to try this last point. Uh, I know this is like that a uh, bloodstock uh, Life of Agony pulled out because their drummer was suffered from heat exhaustion from the, the previous date. Like, Jesus. Yeah, that's something I've uh, seen people saying online too is like, if, well, this whole thing with the rising temperatures in summer. If it gets to the point where the UK will be getting like 40 degree summers, well, a lot of these festivals will they be able to happen within fuel costs, the, the unavailability of bands coming over, and then you've got 40 degree fucking summers where bands will be playing in smaller festivals in Eastern Europe or whatnot, where they wouldn't be as well fan, all fanned up and everything like the bigger festival, like what's that? What? And they start dropping like flies from heat exhaustion, like what? What? You know, it's. <laughs> It's yeah. a weird time, man, isn't it, you know? I know. Fuck me. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, well, we'll move on from that now. Hope I, I'm not saying festivals will stop or anything, but the whole and, and every gig tours will still continue. But it's it's a, it's a hairy time for bands again, man. And, but anyways, we've gone a, we've done a bit too long about that now. But we just wanted to kind of highlight it if people didn't know about it, because I would suggest to people now, not been panicky or fucking crazy here, but if, if your favorite bands are on tour, you should really go and see them because. Yeah, I know. No, no, but anyways, enough of that, enough of that. Abaddon Incarnate, brilliant album, and hopefully now they get out and play a few gigs and things go continue to go well for them with their album cycle, which they have been going very positive so far. And next up on our list, we have a, a Dublin-based band, metalcore band, Neon Empire, who have released their latest single, War.
unfortunately, I've stopped it there, Vic, just slightly over a minute. Yeah. Well, metalcore band, I'm not the biggest metalcore fan, to be honest with you, but what they do, they do it well. Yeah, they did too. I, I actually I like that song, I do. It's a really good song, it is. It's they like good, they like good catchy songs, don't they? All the it's hooks and everything. Catchy. That's all the hooks in it, you know? It's catchy. They're, they're releasing a new, I think they're releasing a new song tomorrow. Oh, oh really? Are they? Salmon. Yeah. All oh, right, grand. So better. Yeah. One every month. I think they're doing another one next month, and then I could be wrong. So, you know. I'll just write that down here now while you say it to me. That's just to keep the list. It's already got that many already for next month, and we're just in the first date of the month, like, you know, like this one, two, three, seven releases already confirmed for September. Like, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Christ. But, uh, no, I was I was hoping to see them at the Siege of Limerick, but they were they clashed with a uh, Black Shook and a Bad Incarnate. So unfortunately, I, I, I didn't yeah. get to see them. Yeah, I know the Black Shook lads for fucking years. Like, so I I caught a few of their songs, and then I went over to see a Bad because I hadn't seen a Bad in years. And with my situation, I've been a care as I touched on earlier. It's hard for me to get to gigs now, so I wasn't going missing the, the opportunity to see them again anyway. But no, no. Best of luck to them. They're they're getting fucking good views on there. Yeah, they're they're doing well with the young crowd. Like there's the the metalcore crowd. The young crowd now seem to be a lot of metalcore coming through again. So yeah. they've had their market and they're they're doing well. And have you have you seen them actually in, in Dublin? No, I haven't. I haven't. I've never seen them. I haven't seen them live. That's very unusual, man. Because they yeah. play a lot in Dublin, and you go to yeah, them, I... like so. It's very unusual. You haven't caught them at some point. Yeah, I probably will catch them sometime, you know. Oh, don't you know well, man? Yeah. And next up on our list, we have a uh, who came to or recently played at Bloodstock Festival on the new Blood stage, and they've released their debut single, Aries. I'm not going to tell you that. Fucking great song, this man. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> bit over a minute there around a minute and a half but i had to stop it unfortunately it's a fucking brilliant song man yeah i know i know it did I, the more i listen to that i'm kind of hearing um early neurosis yeah a bit of the, mastodon as well too all the vocals so, so, the different vocal styles and they're just going holy yeah, shit this darlene funny. they kind of have their they do dual vocals like so that's uh they've got their own kind of thing going on there with two yeah. vocalists like out of a three-piece band like that's not, I don't know. It's not unusual, but it's not that common. Like, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's the, the whole sound is just fucking heavy. <laughs> there and what you touched on there with a uh, Neon Empire releasing a song a month, that seems to be the plan as well. With uh, Hint as well, like they're just going to oh, the, rather right. than drop an album, they're just going to drop a track each month and then release it all at the one time. Did they an oh. album or EP? I'm not actually entirely sure to be honest now, but but that's their plan going forward. Yeah, I'd spe- I think 
that's a good idea. You know? The only way to do it now, man, if you release yeah. an album all at one time, it gets a bit of fucking traction and then it just, that's it. Yeah, I know. Fortunately, yeah. that's just the way it's gone now. You have to just keep it con- consistently ticking out or people will just forget about you because it's just the way it's gone, like really, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, but they got Bloodstock there now, so that's a good b- push for them now and they'll be playing the Crypt of the Riff, I believe too, yes? Yeah. I go. I'm going to go to that. I oh, you told me you were going to that, all right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, can can miss that. You know, fucking great lineup. You know, fucking and twenty five pounds. You know, can't go fucking giveaway. Yeah. Oh. Giveaway for the bands you're getting on that lineup. Yeah. Before we move on, actually, what we mentioned neurosis there. Did you see what happened? Uh, the, the break. Yeah. Oh, me, man. Oh, my camera's gonna. Yeah, I don't know what happened there with camera, but yeah, that was yeah. fucking crazy, man. Fucking hell, he's gone since 2019, beating the shit out of his missus and his kids. Like, fucking hell, like. Sad end for the sad end for that band, man. It really is a sad end for that band, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I know. Anyway, I'm, not, I'm not going to tell you any more on about it now because it's a fucking sensitive subject. But it's a very sad end for them to leave that, to finish up that way after all the great music they gave us. Like. I know. But anyways, best of luck to Haynes and I. They're definitely on the right track here, and yeah, more to come from them. And next up is uh, Cosgrave released their album or the EP actually. This was it album or EP? Album, 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 album. Dominican study album. Yeah, basically it's, it's a debut album. They've had a few um, EPs. I knew that right. EPs are right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this well, is full what, album, man. I've listened, I've, given it, I've listened to it all right, but I, with uh, bands like Cosgrave, they release like fucking seven minute songs, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I know. Three songs are a fucking album, like. <laughs> and we're just going to, I'm going to skip this track a bit forward now because, again, it's a long track and I, there's a long intro and I want to kind of give a, a better idea, but it's kind of going to kick in around two minutes in. <laughs> Actually, or no? Yeah, man, it's a fucking great album. It is. You didn't do a review for your website for it, no? S- sorry? You didn't do a review for that for your website, did you? No? Yeah, yeah. The, I thought the, you did, the, all right. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah. yeah um, a fucking, I, I've got to sit down and listen to it properly, to be honest with you. But as I mentioned earlier, with the whole yeah. cut off thing, I mean, mine has been kind of fucking the last few weeks trying to fight, fight this fucking. Fight the fucking man. I'll fuck the man. I'll fight the man to the fucking bitter end. The next time when you fucking give me back my money, you cunts, I'm going to take it all out and keep it in a fucking stash somewhere. You won't track my money then, you fucking bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the old cash is king, man. Cash is king. But anyways, <laughs> get to that stage now. I have a few cans of me already. Like, but ah, fuck it, I deserve a few cans today after the bullshit I put up. But anyways, enough of that. Cosgrave, man, fucking, yeah, they're quality, man. I've seen they're them at Cedar Limerick. I was seriously yeah. impressed by them. Yeah, yeah, it's a great album, it is. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, um, do you remember Bestial Warlust? Do you remember, sorry, what? Bestial Warlust. The kind of war, that kind of war metal, black deck sound. Yeah, really... yeah, that's, why call, that's why they call themselves on stage, where we are no. war metal, like. Okay, man, um, and it's, it's really, <laughs> 
kind of scary sounding, basically. You know, well, they okay. know what they're they know what they're aiming for. Yeah, and we will touch on it near again near the end. But uh, what's the name of them again? Sure. A member of Coscraz in a new project called Lud. Lud, yeah. Lud, Lud. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Lud. They're, they're all like from originally from places like Croatia and Mexico and Spain. Like they're. It's a new black metal project that's coming. Like they're releasing a lot of uh, uh, stuff on social media, like yeah. you know, recording and stuff. And what I'm hearing is sounding fucking sweet as yeah. well. Like, yeah, and Cosgrave, uh, they've got a launch. They've got an album launch uh, actually in February yeah. very soon as well too. Yeah. Downstairs, like uh, the eighth of October. Eighth of October. I'll probably add to that. I've never seen them. I'll probably add to it. Oh. Man, if, even if you didn't, even if you just went in and didn't fucking drink or whatever, just go in yeah, and watch it. Like, yeah, no, it'd be worth your while going and check them out because they are fucking good and the sound it and fibers is very good, especially downstairs like so. Yeah. So if you haven't, if you're into black or war metal, make sure you check out Coscra and fair play to Hick for keeping the fucking band together, man. You know, or he's he's done well with it and yeah. And next up now, we have an actual band that's not even based in Ireland. They're based in the UK. But the reason I'm including them is, believe it or not, 18 years ago, I got my first ever drum lesson from the drummer in this band. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> Paul, I, Paul Igo, man. He, he gave me, I got my drum kit in 2004. What was it? Uh, what was the name make of it? Actually, I can't remember now. I've, I've, I upgraded to a Pearl before I had to stop playing a few years ago because I know I've nowhere to play them anymore. But uh, what make was it again? Can't remember. Shit, fucking cheap ass kit. But but I got a lesson from him, and he was there playing all this stuff, and I was just like, fucking hell! Like this is the bar <laughs> now. This is the bar. <laughs> so, anyways, and enough of that. We'll we'll talk a bit more about it in the end. I have another story there for this particular band, but. This is Deadly Circus Fire, and this is their track Whitewash from their album. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> extinction. 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 The album's called Extinction. Extinction is the name of the album, and if you're into prog metal, I would strongly suggest people check out Deadly Circus Fire's album Extinction. It's fucking brilliant, like, yeah. like the title track is called Extinction. And it's like, have you listened to it? We were doing a test out podcast, remember? Just the piano oh, and the vocals, like, oh, my camera's gone off again. Fucking hell, what's going on here? But anyway, uh, and it was fucking, it's, it's, it's haunting, man. And there was a song about that. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry as well, like take your medicine, you know, it's 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 a fucking brilliant album. But anyways, I have another little story for you. After my first project, which I will not name again, because I don't want to call it, say it, it's the, that name again. <laughs> but I just, my second project was called uh, the Sonic Circus. And back in 2015, I had one Sonic Circus Festival, well, Gigstable or whatever you want to call it. It was eight bands and fibbers. And the headline band I brought over from the UK was Deadly Circus Fire. So I think it's fucking poetic that I had <laughs> one Sonic Circus Festival with the clown face logo that Colin the Digger by design done for me at the time. It's a fucking class logo. Yeah. And the, the, only, the only festival was headlined by Deadly Circus Fire. And I just thought, yeah. <laughs> I nailed that by default. I wasn't planning it, 
It wasn't yeah. my thoughts to do it because that was when I became a a care or such in 2015, not the level I am now, but uh, that was when it began. Like, so that was when my days of putting on high end gigs ended. Like, so, but ah, it was a Brett and Paul over to play. And the only time he ever played Ireland was when I brought him over. So he was fucking, he got to play Ireland. All his friends were there, his family. Oh, cool. I've seen the band play, and it was just all the lads were there. It was like a bit of a great day. Like, I lost money doing it, but fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking lost a lot of money doing it actually do to be honest with you fucking I lost, I think I lost two grand I... fuck <laughs> <laughs> whoops <laughs> yeah but anyways that's that's life and promotions man that's why I fucking don't really miss it to be honest with you you know it's 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 great when it goes well like when Arno Corp Came out. I got Iron Core, I brought bought them I didn't bring them over, they were over anyway, but I done well that night, but you know, it's fair play H and all the boys for keeping going and Johnny fucking from free tour booking and all the rest because Jake had uh, yeah. Jake of uh, Elder Druid as well because it's a fucking risky game to be in. But anyways, that was Deadly Circus Fire and if you're into prog metal I'd say fucking check them out. It's fucking brilliant. And next up, uh, another month, another Ren Marabou and the Berserkers release. <laughs> They've kind of slowed down a bit lately, though, haven't they? Like, they're, they're still consistently releasing stuff, but they're not as... Yeah. I think they're better off because they've cut that tour with um, that upcoming tour. Yeah, it's with... Oh, Jesus, it's with Vader, with Vader and Hate. Sorry? With Vader and um, Hate are playing as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's a oh. big fucking tour for them to get on, like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know how or where they fit, but. I know. But it's still, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a life achievement for the boys, like, get out and play a fucking yeah. tour with a big band, like, you know? Yeah. So I'll knock on a bit of their new song. It's Bloodlines Echoes of the Norse Gale. <laughs> This isn't Red Bar Boo, though. This is an ad. <laughs> Another fucking ad. Good news. Here we go. Actually, that song was actually nine minutes long. Yeah, I, I know. Fucking, he couldn't. He didn't release an album or an EP this month, so he released a nine-minute song instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, I would release if I can't release an album or an EP this month. I'd release an EP in one fucking track. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the think, flip. What? Sorry. I think that um, connects the three albums. Big, it's kind of a story revolving around yeah. all the albums and it's basically. Yeah, there's a the team throughout. Because, you know? Yeah, I don't know why my video keeps going off there, but there's a, there's a running team throughout their music, all right. It's all around Norse mythology and all the rest of it. Like. Yeah. No, um, yeah, I, lo- I, I enjoy that Tales of Rune album. It's really good. It is. You no. Know? I like all this stuff, man. It's all really well written. It's all catchy. It's all. You can do... I can imagine they'd do well in the European festival circuit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of. It's a lot of anthems in there, you know? Which is. Which goes well with 
probably go well at fucking big festivals mm-hmm. as well. Oh yeah, would well, definitely. I'd... Ah, but they 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 keep the name out there, and they've gotten big numbers yeah. on Spotify, and they've got this tour coming up. So hopefully now next year they might be able to potentially get on a few festival bills. Like there's, there's plenty of them left yet, you know. Even though we were talking earlier about maybe the future of them might be a bit all over the place, but yeah. The kind of benefit bands like Ren Marabou, if they can't get an American band over, they might start looking more into the European bands, you know, to keep the for the smaller stages like. Yeah. That's um Yeah, I know. I just I was I was thinking I've been thinking that for a while now. All the big American bands, they're not gonna come over here. I make gonna make it very difficult like and, Cannibal Corpse announced the tour, the European tour. Mm. They're not coming here. But they only came here recent enough, though. Yeah, I know, but they're doing nearly every European city on this tour. Oh, really? Yeah, they're doing a lot of it. Basically, mainland Europe. They're playing the UK. They're playing a few dates in the UK. All right. Uh, yeah. Maybe because they were around so recent, they might have put, yeah. they might have reached out to John and James and Fergal and whatnot, and they yeah. might have said, "No, nah, we've." Uh, Dark we've... Funeral are on the bill. As oh well. really? I only oh, really? saw them about two hours ago, basically. And holy shit, that's a minor. Uh, maybe it might have been too pricey to bring in. You wouldn't know, yeah. like it's. Uh... Yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> sure, look at anyways. Best yeah. of luck to Ren Marabou, and hopefully yeah. now next thing things kick off for him. And now next on our list, we're going different again, <clears throat> and it's God alone released a new track, etc. Play a bit of that now before we divulge. All right. The best smiles are the ones you don't hold back. New Colgate Max. skip it on a bit just to give a play another few seconds i'm just going to put it forward a bit kind of a bit i was a bit I, my benefit of hindsight i was may have been a bit hard on them in the last one i wasn't hard on them as such but i was very surprised by the yeah direction you know yeah i like that song i do it's really good it is but um i will they're they're trying something fucking different you know which yeah. and i will after listen to the first track and the second track I can see what they're doing because they like at their, their gigs they say we want people to dance we mm. want a uh, kind of a fusion of like a hardcore metal and whatever dance and that's a very bad that's a very bad description of it but like you know they have this kind of idea in their head where they've got to have a, they're going to have a kind of a, a, a heavy live show with a lot of heavy vocals and stuff but they want the crowd to, to dance and interact. And they got a, apparently they got a really good festival, a reaction to the festival there last weekend or a couple weeks ago. Uh, which one? The one in England with Opet and all the rest was on it. You know the one in Ottawa? No. 
uh, arc tangent, I think it was I, called. I couldn't think of the name, but I couldn't think of the name. But apparently they went down really well there, like. Yeah, yeah, it's good to hear, actually. No. Yeah, and the the Irish tour lined up for the release, and apparently they're going into Europe as well next. So. Yeah. Okay. That prosthetic behind them, so there's obviously there's obviously the plan there in place. You know, I, we were we were kind of maybe. We were like oh, old men fucking shouting the clouds a bit in the <laughs> last one, you know. <laughs> you know? But um, I was playing it, and my daughter's my daughter was kind of listening to it, and she said, "I like the way they use different sounds." Yeah. And then, oh yeah, that's basically basically you took <laughs> a terrorist. You took an eight-year-old to kind of, oh yeah, that's yeah. true. No, that's all it is. But they're young lads. They're obviously tapping into the young person's scene. Like we've already touched on earlier with Neon Empire being popular with the whole metalcore thing, you know. We're, this stage now, man, we're fucking men with great futures behind us, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 so but anyways, no, I, I get where God alone are going now with this and that things are looking really good for them, to be honest with you, you know. At, all the, the signs are there, really. I know they don't have the numbers you, in regards to views and such, but they're getting the number. They're getting the they're getting in the right places. You know, the festivals are taking notice. Promoters yeah. are taking notice. They're selling out gigs. They're getting great receptions in the UK. Like, they went back to places in the UK and they got a good crowd. Like, cause after the first gig, so <clears throat> they're doing everything right. So, and they could be. I, I potentially could be the next real big breakout Irish band, you know. I, I honestly think yeah. it could have happened for them, you know. They have got everything. If they're doing everything right, they've got a label, they've got their own thing going on, and, you know, they didn't have to go through, didn't go through metal to the masses or anything. They just made it all on their own steam, like, so fucking hats off to them, like. Yeah, true. That's it. Uh, I know. Yeah, well done to them, and we wish them the best of luck. And now, next up, we have uh, Keith McCoy, who released Human Your Machinery here. Is that how you pronounce it? Human <laughs> Machinery. Well, he released part two and part three this month. Yeah, that's right. He, he should have waited a couple of days, and we would be able to include him again next month, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll lock on a bit of part two now, a limited memory. It's a fucking great track. Yeah. Like a bit like Ren Marabou earlier, he, he keeps bumping them out too. Like, yeah, I know. So, did another EP coming out this month? Really? Yeah. He's it's another this, fucking EP coming out this month. The same DP of destruction. It's called. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what the fuck, man? He's a machine. He is. He's fucking like I, I, I had Keith on my on this on the podcast here. We done the Halloween horror special last year. Yeah, and he told me he wanted to do this for years, but he was he was working. He had a kid. He had misses. Yeah. He was in a tribute cover band, whatever you want to call it. He'd be on the road, fucking two three nights. He was essentially he was working seven days a week for years. So when the whole lockdown has kicked in. And he'd, he'd made up his mind that he was giving up the whole band thing at that point anyway because, you know, he just had enough of it, you know. He, 
like seven days a week, not seeing his kid or anything, and blah blah blah. But uh, and now he's just gone into the fucking writing mode that he wanted to do for years, and it's just it's like a fucking it's like a fucking waterfall, man. It's not like a stream. It's like a waterfall was unleashed, like a fucking dam burst. It's just fucking. It's consistent and it's constant and it's always really good as well. Like, yeah, I know, I know. You, you usually, usually, when someone's releasing that volume of material so quickly, they might be, but no, it's not the fucking key. Fuck me, it's amazing. It is no, keep going. Sorry, you know? that he keeps going, keeps releasing all this quality. Oh know? yeah. And he's not releasing it for anyone or anything. He's just fucking releasing it, like. Yeah, exactly. Not, yeah. not, not trying to not put. I don't think he makes any physical copies or anything. He just does it himself and releases it, and and he's in uh, symbiotic tomorrow as well. Yeah, I think they've, they've got something coming as well too, haven't they? I was think he was laying down some drum tracks recently for a new. I think another new song. <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's sake, man! He's he's fucking putting an EP together while he's releasing two in like fucking three months. Like, <laughs> I'd like uh, to see um, I'd like to see Alan from Symbiotic tomorrow releasing some more stuff. So, like that last EP. Oh, brilliant! That was fantastic EP. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the Limerick boys, man. They're just they're they're flat out and. Uh, uh, Mick, uh, whom Zila Cult, uh, his debt collector, they more or less got the album ready to go now as well, too. Like, yeah. not yet, but they're recording it, like, but yeah, the, 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 the boys they fucking they're, they keep fucking churning it out. Yeah, and, and next up now, we have a, a very interesting band, and like, it's, it's Idle Discourse, Law Abiding Citizen. We'll play a minute of them now, and then we'll have a, a fucking Don't rock the boat, you know we're really tolerant of vigorous here. Stop it there, unfortunately. But <clears throat> no, I like what they're doing. It's got the they've got the whole Dublin accent in with the whole yeah. genting and everything. You know, they're, they're you know they're. I think that um, um, I hear, heard slight elements. Remember um, what's Clark the name? Claw finger. Sorry, which one? Remember claw finger. Oh, of course, I remember claw finger. Yeah. yeah, of course I do. Yeah. It basically, just, I'm here kind of. So that kind of vibe, yeah, yeah. I may check them out a bit more. Actually, I've only checked out one or two tracks. Yeah, no, I like the lyrics as well. Like they're they're, yeah. they're very well written lyrics, and they kind of there was a bit of kind of a bit of a gap there after Cork Street Posse called it a day with uh, Lee and uh, Red Marabou was at them as well too. Like, remember oh, them? Right. Which one? Cork Street Posse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, it kind of remind me of them because they have the whole, the whole Dublin accent rapping in there, <clears throat> but they've got a more gent thing going on. They've released a few tracks now, and they've all been very different. And oh, I like what they're doing. Like you know, it's it's different. You know. Yeah. You know, it's a break from the norm. You know, it's a. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And a few of the lads are the other I I. I know their their experience, like I know there's members in the bands that have been in other bands. I think I can't remember exactly who now, but 
I know the lad. I don't know the lads, but I know the names to see over various projects over the years. So the yeah, this is their new thing going on now. I don't know if they're playing live or anything, or if it's just a studio project. But ah, it's a good video and good track, and I like what they're doing. And best of luck to them. Oh, next up we have a uh, Maltusian who released. Uh, well, they didn't release it. it was excuse me, I've. Uh, Video made for them for their track Delirium. I'm going to skip this on a bit too because it's got a really long intro. Like, yeah. It's uh, 10 minutes and 44 seconds long, but it's a fucking great track. Yeah, but I, yeah, it's, I like listening to them. But as I think, um, I don't know if you remember um, a band called Wreck of the Hesperus. No, no your man, um, one of the members from it has done the video for that. Oh, all right. All Ray, right. Larry Carnahan, I think. And he's oh. doing photography as well now. As well, oh, very good, very good. But he, he, yeah, he was in Wreck of the Hesperus with um Andy, one of the members of Malthusian. I don't know what's happened with, uh, yeah, I think, I think Wreck of dissolved, dissolved. I think I don't know if they're releasing any more thing stuff, basically. But that's Mal um, that's Malthusian. who looked for that. No, Malthusian don't really re release that thing. Yeah, don't release music too often either, do they? No, no, no. Yeah, when you're like, your one track is eleven minutes long, like it takes a lot of work. Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Shame we had to kind of cut into it a bit, but I wanted to kind of give up people an idea of it because the intro is long. It's like, a, but it all fits in. It's kind of bleak and doomy, kind of death doom, kind of it's just know. looking. Everything about it is fucking horrible, but in the best yeah, possible way. Yeah, filthy. <laughs> exactly. Filthy, uh, horrible, fucking depressing and negative. And they're they, they actually they're playing soon enough, aren't are they? I don't know. I, I think um, I'm not sure actually. I've seen something about it, but I yeah, I'll have to look that up actually. Yeah. That was, Kind of the months have kind of started sliding into each other now as we do this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. Oh no. It's only got like fucking 294 views though, which is a fucking shame, yeah. man. It's a bit of a great fucking band, like, you know. Yeah, I know. Jesus. That's unusual, that is. Yeah. But sure, that's social media now, man. It's fucking. I think that they've been on on Facebook now, if you, unless you're. <clears throat> Follow on if you go into the feed thing and go into the proper page feed, you're gonna just gonna see shite like Yeah. No, it's you you've got to just go into the feeds, otherwise you're just gonna be like some of the things I do see in my feed or if I don't go into it or just like why is this the end of me like oh, I don't care about any of this. Anyway, so next up on the thing in, on the the notion of don't care or what anyone says or whatever. Is ritual effects ex crooks who are still fucking happy to be stuck back in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, but... So much lad, Mo Mo's a legend, man. He <laughs> is to, to get on him live. It's great. It is. I remember the last time he was hopping out in the crowd and playing, man. 
Yeah, so I that was, watched them. It is, you know. I've told this story before on on one of the monthly you fucking. But I remember back when, back in the day when I was running my early stuff, and I heard a story that they were over in London at Curac and uh, uh, it would have been silly and rail at the time. And Mo had his wireless guitarist, and he fucking. He ran out the door and next thing they seen a fucking bus flying past and they're like, oh no, he's fucking dead like. <laughs> <laughs> he obviously seen the bus at the last second and fucking whoop, get back in here like. <laughs> yeah. Mental fucking front man, mental front man. One of my favourite front men I've seen to be honest with you, he's just. Yeah. But anyways, we'll put on a bit of their song X Crooks. Just a bit over there, I'll stop it. Unfortunately, ah, that's a brilliant fucking song, man. Yeah, it's a great song. That is, you know. It, um, I like that video as well. Yeah. The, the, the guy, the, the tall, big blonde guy, is really intense looking. You know, it's why it's really the videos are really well done. You know? Yeah, they. What they do, they do it right. Like, you know, they don't take any half measures. Like, they, they release great videos. Like, I remember one of their videos that had the whole Beavis and Butthead logo at the end of it. Like, you know. <laughs> I don't know whether we touch on this in the last podcast. or did, did you watch the new Beavis and the Butthead movie, Do the Universe? No. No. Oh, you, should, you should watch it, man. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it to watch. All right. I used to be in stitches back, back in the day watching them. Well, <laughs> oh, there's one scene. I'm not, I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. But all I said say, there was one scene where there was like white privilege. Oh, um. <laughs> oh, oh it, 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 it's fucking brilliant, man. I remember that scene. I was just like, oh. <laughs> this is exactly how the 90s would have fucking reacted to this fucking. Yeah. Thing that's going on in the fucking metaverse or whatever is going on. It's not going on in my fucking reality or most people's reality either, but you're... <laughs> and uh, next up on our list, uh, we've got another band that's kind of following in the grungy kind of 90s fucking feel. There's Vendetta Love, who released their EP this month. We'll play a bit of their track Walk Alone now before we'll have a bit of a chat about them. Unfortunately, you know, that's a brilliant song, in my opinion. But 
That AP, well, I listened to it there actually just two days ago. I just gave it a brief listen through. Really fucking good, man. Yeah, I know. It, it is. The, really way I, the more I've been listening to them, the more they grow on me. I only became familiar with them about half a year, just over half a year ago. Basically. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been aware of them for fucking... I kind of knew them then. Yeah, but it's, uh, I didn't listen to them. Basically, right. when I let them, I mm-hmm. just... Oh, oh, this this kind of like like a mix of 80s hard rock and 90s grunge, basically. Mm-hmm. So, you, gave them, you gave them a very favorable review on your website as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's kind of... Um, some of the leads kind of remind me of Guns N' Roses. No, have that kind of feel to them, and then you have the the title track on that EP. This is pure Alice in Chains. And it's you know, it's a heavy, proper heaviness. Yeah, they wear their influences on their sleeve, but they yeah. do it in the nicest possible way. You know, They're yeah, just... I know. But that that Walk Alone track that's that's a fantastic, yeah. that's a fantastic song, man. I'm kind of surprised that. That could easily be played on fucking radio. Oh yeah. No, easily. Yes. That's, that's... Yeah, they've got they've got everything to maybe yeah, make I know. a breakthrough, like you know, it's just but sure we won't we like it's we it's, we won't go down that road rabbit hole again yeah. and touching into radio and everything else because you know, yeah. we could be here for the next twenty minutes going on about it about the lack of support for Irish acts, like, you know. Oh, Radio yeah. now is basically now a fucking nostalgia act. It's all just seventies, eighties, and nineties music, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, they 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 have the radio just fucking plays it safe now. You know, just keep the fucking Joe Duffy's on. Fucking, they're fucking. Oh, tell me how your pain. Tell me how it hurts. <laughs> Twist me fucking nipples. Oh, the pain. Oh, and how does how does it make you feel, Adrian? How does it make you feel? Uh, <laughs> 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 that's basically radio in a nutshell now fucking yeah. but the, what i don't know no no not overall i know it's the rock dublin and everything doing their bit but it's just a difficult market now Where the fuck do i go with that <laughs> oh jeez man this is the most i've drank in a while doing this man i'm fairly fucking steamed already man but you're after the day i had i'll forgive myself <laughs> 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 oh, I don't know what I'm going to say ever. Uh, next up, we have a, a new track from uh, Apogee Tide, which is Sam, who was previously in Alinkus, along with Rory, who was he's not in the project, so he's done studio drumming from. It's good to see them lads keep going because that was a yeah, st- I know. Yeah, have you ever seen Alinkus? No, but I did listen to them. They fucking, I heard, I heard. It. Oh, I man. They work. were a fucking force of nature, man. Yeah. They were a force of fucking nature. Three vocalists, Sam, Rory, and Jesus, Chris. Like, uh, like they were, they were fucking class, man. Well, that was, that's the past. Now the future is with Sam with his new project, Apogee and Tide. It's like a gent type thing. We're going to play a bit of this now. See you people think. Pause it a second there and move it on a bit in the track just to. Thank you. 
know, can I give I wanted to give a kind of an overall impression to the best of the ability yeah. within the minute we we have to play the play the songs. But no, no, it's a really good fucking track and it's great to see yeah. stuff going like or keep going, should I say. Yeah, it, 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 man. I like like the progressive element in it, you know. There's a bit of gent in there as well. Yeah, there is, yeah. It's a really it's a really good fucking song. It's like just under five minutes long, so we we couldn't really represent it all. As, uh, well, I, I think we gave it a pretty good representation there, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I don't know what the situation with, I think it's obviously going, I don't know if it's going to be an EP, and I don't know if there's any plans to ever take a live or anything, but sure, them lads, they, they had plenty of <clears throat> yeah. live time with that. Olympus and they got some good moments in there. So if even if they just do studio work from here on in, keep going, lads. Just keep it fucking coming because you're fucking class. <laughs> Always have been. And uh, next up we have uh, Sky Pilot who released their album. You were at the launch, man. Yeah, I was at the I was at the launch gig. Yeah, it was good night. It was. Yeah, yeah. You seemed to enjoy your night. You did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sky it's, Pilot, it's, right on. Yeah. Play a bit of this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I stop it there, but <clears throat> uh, I think that's a fucking great album, man. Yeah, it's, a, it's pure riffs, plenty of very, very minimal singing, and just loads of riffs, you know. And um, they're the same live there. Basically, you hear that. That's what you you'll hear the same thing live. It's it's they sound great. They do, you know. They're they're twenty years of band. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah the same in the same oh. lineup. Yeah, that, that's weird, man, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, but they've, they've got their, you've got their album launch and they're playing the Crypt of the Riff as well, too. It's got to come in, like. That's right, yeah. But you enjoyed your night with them anyway? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a great night, it was. It was, um, I was talking to Freddie and um, Neil and Nomadis. They were at the gate. Oh, they were they're there as well, oh, yeah. Yeah, they were there, yeah, yeah. Good laugh was actually. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. That's good now because when you get to know the few lads and the few bands and whatnot, at least when you go to a gig, you know you'll have someone there, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. When you're I, arrived, I arrived through to at about four o'clock Saturday. Yeah. And I was drinking basically. I did. I did get something to eat now. In there, which they do bar food on the late PM, which is great. Oh, that's handy, yeah. Oh, so I got some to eat in there, a few beers, and then went upstairs. I did. I, I stayed. I stayed with someone out out in Hollywood. It's just about twenty minutes away from Belfast. Oh, not so bad. So you were happy out, but following day, I, no, I was. I was zombie <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> I was. I was hoping to see them at the siege, but. Things things didn't work out for them, but however. Hello. Yeah. And next up, we have uh, "Strangers with Guns," who released their track. Is it puke or how? P H U P U H. Fuck you. Fuck. Huh? 
Fuck you. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Stop it there now, unfortunately. But another fucking great that's a great album, man. Yeah. I know, yeah, it's a fucking deadly album. It is fucking, um, that's just a complete throwback to the 90s. Like, yeah. it's just, I know you kind of hear um, the likes of them, um, likes of fair, um, what you call it, Tad's, okay, and um, Henry Rollins, yeah, all the all the influences, <laughs> like, you no, know? yeah, I know it's a, it's a brilliant album, and uh. They put up a video that played live at Indi- Independence in Cork. Yeah. I watched that when it was premiering, actually. I was just, it was during the time that I was here with the dogs or whatever, looking after them. And they just put on YouTube and next thing it was premiering. And I was like, oh, I watched that. And I was like, fucking hell, that was, that was a great set. Like, yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. And you were at the album launch in Wheelands, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Great night that was as well. And, um, they were great that night, actually. No, ah, get, getting Brian in and or watching is he's known on, online. I know yeah. base was a fun oh, man. I, I know, I know he was doing a lot of singing as well. You are, so ah, he, 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 he's met that band like, yeah, uh, it suits them big time. I remember back <laughs> in the day, he was in a band called Val Normal and he left the band for reasons I'm not going to get into because it's whatever but uh when he left the band they had to bring in two bass players to replace him it's fucking joke jesus that's the level of bass playing he was doing yeah. that he but they had to bring in two bass players to replace him like yeah and when you see him playing uh, live at the independent set what i seen he was just like the, the the sound the bass sound and the guitar sound i know but it's a three piece you know you have got to try and fucking harmonize them as best you can and they fucking they nailed it man they absolutely fucking nailed it like and the vocal the the dual vocals as well too like it's it's a fucking perfect fit like he kind of has that similar humor to jeffy does you know gosh them boys are all fucking (laughs) they're just they all wear hawaiian shirts on stage like you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. Like, well, like what's not to love about that like, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would never wear a fucking Hawaiian shirt in my life but fair play to them for going up on stage and doing it and making they're just, they're just a happy band like you know yeah just if you hear them like when you're our age and you're like oh this takes me back to fucking yeah I know <laughs> the happier times and people weren't fucking walking around on phones and fucking just everyone was just happy yeah <laughs> Fucking living in the fucking metaverse. <laughs> and next up, we have a band that are back after. Uh, I don't know if they're, they're, there was a bit of a break or anything, but Darkest Year, they released they've released a few tracks recently. Yeah, they, they, they were yeah they've just very inactive for a long time, or you know. Uh, but they're back now. I don't know this track. I'm going to have to. It's a, it's a long track. It's not really just a long track, but I'm going to have to move it forward a bit. There's an ad on you, just to kind of. Move it forward around. Well, move it around a minute. I'll put it in. Don't 
hard to represent that track in a minute man but i know it's only four and a half minutes long give or take but uh hard to represent it but uh, they've got their album launch gig lined up soon with uh that the level are supporting them as well all oh, right yeah 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 they announced uh the starship project that they were playing uh fuck man oh my. i'm no good for dates anymore but uh it's coming up anyway so if you're into if you if you're a fan of Darkest Era, like fucking look it up. Like the Death of Leveler and Darkest Era with the Torsion Project <clears throat> are playing an album launch gig. And to be honest, man, if I could go to one gig, I'd go to that. Like to be honest with you, because I'd really be really interested to see Darkest Era and Death of Leveler. Yeah. Like, like you know, I saw Darkest Era good few near almost ten years ago in Fibers. They're around a long time now, man. They've had numerous yeah. lineups changes, but they're still going. Like. Yeah, I know. Wasn't uh, members of uh, Celtic Celticore as well in that band? I think there were, I think there might have been at one stage. Mulgrews, like there was Ag- the Mulgrews, they were married now, like the yeah, the drummer, and uh, I, I don't know what instrument he plays to answer you, but yeah, this is but that uh, well, great to see them still going and coming back, and they're signed to Candlelight Records as well too, like so they're fucking. Because obviously know. something there, like, you know, so fucking fair play. And next up we have uh, Baller, uh, Rob's project. And this was a bit of a shift in direction in regards to vocals in this one, in Cold Blood, wasn't it? Yeah. But we will play a bit of it now before we talk about it. <laughs> there but a very different track from what he was previously doing isn't it yeah i know i know yeah um by experimentation i think and, um, and he's, think, he's he's in his vocals in a band now like fucking, yeah you remember? Uh, our, uh, i think it's hard rats yeah, 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 like yeah. That, yeah i fucking kind of couldn't think of their name right now but yeah. He seems to have uh, poured a bit of water, cold water, and the whole Balor life thing now because he's got these vocalists in the band now, and he's kind of keeping Balor as his side project. But this is this is a big, it's a, it's a big, it's a big, it's not really a massive change, but it is in regards that he was pure yeah. black metal up to now, and he's kind of gone in a kind of a jet metally kind of way now. Yeah. But I think he's just got to be sticking to the black metal. To be honest with you. Uh, with Baylor, I think he was. A, I think that was a bit of experimentation there. You know. Oh yeah, but it's he's he's releasing he's recording this stuff in his own at home, like you know. So yeah, I know. Not, he's not making money out of it or anything. Yeah, so if he yeah. wants to fucking do different things, do different things, like you know. Yeah. But oh, no, I know. I like that track now. To be honest with you, I really like that one. To be honest, it still yeah. has kind of. Black metal. The riffs are basically. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's like a black and death was kind yeah. of vibe to it. Like you know, it's just the departure in vocals. I found was a bit bit 
wasn't. It was fine. It was just I didn't expect it, you know. Yeah, it was, I know. Kind of caught I me know. on the hop, like, but fair play, like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Keep fucking doing it, Matt. Keep fucking pumping them out, like. And next up now we have a a lighter act. It's which is ironic because it's he's part of a black metal project as well. He's in Horenda. It's Mark O'Brien. He's releasing his own music now. It's called Astral. Like kind of real kind of Alice and Chainsy vibe to this, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good fucking song, man. We'll we'll play a bit of it here now. Watch me. Oh, why are you playing that? That's not metal, but he's part of the metal community. He's in Horenda, he's doing his own thing. We're going to include him. Yeah, it's a good song, that is. Yeah. He really just he released a new track today as well. No, he dropped the artwork. All oh, right, all oh, right. He it, dropped the artwork, he dropped the artwork today. So there is another track coming now in this month now. So, yeah, ah, fair play. I, I met him at the, the Siege briefly, and it's good to see he's got the confidence now to. Well, yeah, do his own thing, like you know. Yeah, no, he just finds he, he can play. It's no, well, he's clearly a fucking talented lad. So, yeah, yeah. you know, so if, it just gives him the, the fucking the horrendous thing. Gave him the pressure of the siege, like playing to the, the crowd of the siege, like gave him the egg on to do stuff like this. Like yeah. more fucking power to him, and best of luck to him, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, you fucking know. going. It was announced there's a gig coming up there is with um, Hashmaker, Horenda, Ritual Effect and Psychotic Outsider. What? Yeah. Hashmaker, Hashmaker, headline. Man, that's a crazy line. That's a fucking, what an unusual lineup like. Yeah, I know, I know. I didn't see that until Hashmaker, Horenda, Ritual Effect and who's the other band? Fucking Psychotic Outsider. You've got a punk band, a 90s fucking influenced grunge band, a black metal band, and a kind of like fucking a sludge band. In I one know. Night. Yeah. Are you going to that? I'll see. I, I think I will. I think I will. If I was living in Dublin and I could just take a trip in, man, I would yeah, go and see that uh, lineup. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that, 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 there's no. See, you couldn't get bored of that lineup like, because it's so fucking diverse. Like. I seen Hashmaker a couple of weeks ago with um, Two Tales of Woe and Snowblinds. Oh, I right. never yeah, yeah. one member. One of their members couldn't go. They were out of four piece. All oh, right. And then they still sounded deadly. Oh, very good, very good. I think of Bucky on stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you imagine the fucking like the the people that are come in for a ritual effect? And next yeah. thing, her end to come up on stage, like, ah. <laughs> what they, these people will be fucking traumatized, man. <laughs> they'll need fucking counseling after that shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> and next up, we on, and, and after Mark O'Brien on the progressive side of things, we have Kessler Effect who released their a video for their track "Be Free," which was definitely the lightest track and it's kind of like a we reviewed it it was kind of like a beatlesy kind of vibe when that the stuff yeah. all the progressive stuff and the tightening which was you know it's a i suppose it's it's strange it's to make into a video i would have gone for the i thought it was another tightening but Oh. 
to that minute now, unfortunately. <clears throat> I think that's a brilliant song. I know it's not exactly heavy, but it's, yeah, like, well, it's, it's the middle, it's the middle of the EP. Like it's kind of the, the Pink Floydy vibes have gone with, you know, you've got the instrumental stuff, the tightening with the whole big epic fucking ending and everything. And then you've got uh, Be Free, which is kind of like the whole, ah, it's, it's, it's a brilliant fucking EP, man. Uh, no, yeah. I listened to it a I listen to it a good bit that EP. I oh, I, 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 I listen to it once a month for definite. Yeah, but, um, it, yeah, it does, it does have that kind of psychedelic vibe to it, like Pink Floyd's. I I it is I fucking love Pink Floyd, so it works all day for me. Like and a great progressive element as well. It's, did you actually? Uh, I never said. Did you actually go to the the fucking the wall gig, Roger Waters the wall? No, no, I didn't. Christ, man, that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, ah, it was a fucking spectacle, man. Apparently, that tour cost four point two million to put together. Oh Jesus Christ! Because of the whole wall, and it was in the Aviva Stadium, and he was inside on it, and fucking the whole thing came down at the end. Ah, oh, yeah. Jesus, man, it was fucking spectacular, man. <laughs> but uh, I like Kessler Effect, I like Pink Floyd, so they're fucking like that, like that. Yeah. And now we've we've got a couple of others. Wait a second. No. Get these last three up now. We've got three more releases, and that's it. And you were just talking about uh, Psychotic Outsider there. Now we're going to play a bit of them. They released their end of the line EP this month. It's more of a demo. It's more of a demo EP. Like they the made it clear that it wasn't recorded and it was self-recorded. Yeah. Like you know, you gave it a good review on your website, though. Yeah, it's it, um, really raw. It is, you know, kind of DIY vibe to it. There is, but um, yeah, I love this. It's the, the filthy it is, you know. And it's very, very in your face. Mm. It is. Yeah, it's a weird one. Like, uh, in the past, Psychotic Outsider, they had two female vocalists, and now they've gone down the route of a male vocalist. I assume it was by necessity, but it seems to be, I don't know, it's a different sound to them, but it seems to, what I'm hearing is good. Like, Yeah, yeah. It's this very lo-fi production, but um, really aggressive. I saw them live a couple of months back downstairs in Fibbers. Hmm, yeah. And then it was the first time I seen them. No, they're going, these, these are good. No. Yeah, well, I, I like it's like how it's out there. They've been around for a few years now. Like, yeah. I think, I think this is their third vocalist. Yeah. All yeah. right. Third vocalist. Yeah. They were, they were previously in a band. Oh, uh, they had another punk band, kind of kind of punky hardcore band with Matt that we used to be in uh, Nakrutna. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh. I can't think of them now. You know what I'm on about now when I say it, but... Yeah. I don't know, but... They're keeping going and they've got gigs coming up now and you said you were previously mentioned they're on that fucking mental lineup with the Ritual Effect, Horrenda and Hashmaker, so... Uh, that should introduce them to a few people anyway, hopefully. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
And now we have to, we're going to go for a bit of a sacrilegia, sacrilegia, sorry. Yeah, sacrilegia. Yeah. Released a single reactionary angel, so we'll play a bit of that now. Nasty, raw, trash, deadly. Black, black trash. Black trash, black trash. Yeah, that's very. I that, 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 don't know why I said death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fucking. They, they, are they a two piece? Are there a three piece or something? No, yeah. three piece. Three piece. Uh, yeah. They were. It was only a, a small band, all right, but. They played Maryland Dead Fest this year. Oh, I see. I actually, yeah, I seen that right. Yeah, they have got around actually, haven't they? Yeah, and they're playing. I think they're going over. I think they're going over to Europe somewhere in Europe soon. Yeah, no. Well, but then um, I don't know. That band used to be in fucking Axel Cemetery, didn't he? Yeah, I was about to say that to you, Diego. Diego, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's actually a drummer. Like... Yeah, and he's a great drummer. He is. Oh, he, he had to be a bit more ambition as well, like so. He, yeah, like Axial Cemetery, as good as they were, they were never they were consistent for a while, but they were never going to be, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's a shame. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the story with Axial Cemetery is, but I, I assume they're gone at this stage. Like, yeah. Fair play to Diego and going off. He, yeah. he he put this band together himself, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he was. You know, and he wanted to write for Kraken. Like, yeah. you could see that years ago. Anyway, it was um, I like to. I can't wait to hear that EP. I can't. Yeah. You no, know, I like the full length album Triclavian. You know, what was this? Some tri Triclavian something, and then. Um, but it, it, the tracks seem longer, and I think the tracks are going to be a bit longer on this new EP than what they were on the full length, basically. Great yeah. stuff. Best of luck to them. Yeah. Because they're, they've, they've done fucking some amazing shit already. Like, you know, when you play Maryland Dead Fest, like if you're an Irish band, like, oh. even if you just go to the grave. And you're like, well, I played Maryland Death <laughs> Maryland Death Man. Death Death Man. That, no, that hasn't done all the fucking fucking building the pyramid, you know. They didn't join any of these pyramid schemes, you know. They just fucking done it on their own, like, you know. Fair play to them, anyway. Uh, and last but no names least on the res releases for this month, we have Feroshi Gananuica. Like, Jeez. What can we say at this stage? Like, what can we say, man? Yeah, I know. Fucking 16 years old, man. Two albums already. He's 16. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, I know. It, it's just like, it blows my fucking mind. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. This kid's a prodigy, man. An absolute fucking prodigy. Fucking nuts. <laughs> oh, I've got a bit of the, the awakening here now.
I'm going to stop it there now, unfortunately, man. But like I was said before, man, this this kid is 16 years old and he's fucking doing this all by himself, man. It's it, it's fucking it's it's amazing, man. It's it's it's, it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and if if you're an old bastard like we are, and you're looking at the metal scene today, and you're seeing fucking metal core and everything else, and you're like. And no, no offense to any of any of that or anything, but when you see a kid, sixteen-year-old kid coming up doing this, you're like, yeah, I don't, you know, there's a future here yet, isn't there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. This whole album is fucking amazing. It is. I heard a few tracks from it a couple of months back, before they were masters, and. This is just fucking mind blowing. It is. I think I, because I keep thinking, well, what the fuck was I doing when I was 16? Well, that's wow. fucking 30, 30 fucking years ago. For me. <laughs> I'm not far off myself, man, but. Well, you know, it's. Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm at a loss for words, really. Yeah, well, I am as well, you know. Because it's fucking just pure talent, like. Yeah. This is fucking, this is Devin Townsend fucking shit, like, you know? It really is, like. I don't you know, know. This, this is, this, this, oh, God, he's 16. He's fucking 16 years old. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 it's, 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 ah. Uh, Thomas, you're fucking, you're an inspiration to us all, even old bastards like us. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll touch on some, uh, we've, we've done the releases now for this moment, we'll touch on some releases that, or some things that we know are coming. And we've touched on an area with uh, the cross card, cross card, geez, I'm too many drinks now, me. Uh, Lud, the, the fucking the new black metal project, like, yeah. Uh, they're sounding fucking really yeah, good. It like. is really good. Yeah. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear something from them actually. No. Yeah, they're they're sounding really fucking good, man. And congenital abnormalities are re- recording as well. I'm not I can't remember if it's an EP or an album now, but that's like fucking yeah, awesome. family, like. Edley. Edley. Good. No. I was good to see Jordy back at it again because yeah. he was he was one of the original members of Shrouded. Yeah. And he was doing the Winterness project and he did another Doom project on the side as well. And he kind of went a bit quiet during the last couple of years. But good to see him coming back, man, you know, and yeah. getting back out there again. Yeah. Yeah. And Oncology are recording as well, too, or, or they're doing something anyway. Yeah. yeah. I know. I noticed that as well, yeah. Yeah, the Breedman seems to be kind of taking the backseat for the moment with Connor, and he's kind of focusing on oncology again now. Yeah. And uh, Celtic Legacy, uh, I've, I've, I've got a, like a crowdfunding thing, but not a crowdfunding thing going where they're kind of reaching out to people to help fund their, is it an album or an EP? I'm not sure, but I think they've got 19... An album. They have, um, I think they have 80 something. They need nineteen more or something like that. The last I seen was that they needed nineteen more backers. So hopefully yeah. that's not a big ass like nineteen like so no, hopefully. No. And it's pretty reasonable price they're looking for as well. And once they get the hundreds, I've been keeping an eye on that. Once they get the hundred, they basically the cost will be covered then. Yeah. And yeah. I would I would I seen the I would I would back them, but I you know, we've covered earlier. I've had no idea. Yeah, going for a month and probably another month, so it's kind of hard for me to back anything at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Phoenix Sleeps are releasing the new EP as well, too. They've gone into the hey, that's what it's deadly. That's what kind of stone or rocky kind of. Yeah, I like them. It's really good there. 
And last but no means least, Frost are going into the studio to, re to record an album, which I assume would be really well released on Curses Monk Records. I haven't reached out to Roger or anything to ask him, but I, I assume that they'll be doing that through them. And uh, Frost, or, that, that EP they released was really fucking good, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's going to be a fucking a quality album, I reckon, because they're they're playing a lot of gigs as well, too. Like, not a lot of gigs, but they're playing, they're out getting, they're getting sharp, like. Yeah. What you call us, or at least in the um, track in two weeks, Nomadis. Nomadis, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, should, I, should, I, should, I should have wrote that down, yeah. Nomadis, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've, they've, they've signed to Distortion Project Records, and they've, They've got a UK tour lined up as well, too. Like, yeah, that's right. So I think it's in the new year. I think it's February, March. They'll be doing the UK tour. Oh, oh no, I'm delighted for the lads because yeah, I've had them on here, man. Oh, I fucking love them, man. They're a fucking cool, fucking bunch of lads. Like, no, yeah, you know, if I ever won band, I would wish all the fucking luck. It would be them lads because they have the work ethic. They've got backing from James at Distortion Project, Distortion Project Records now. Got UK contacts and they're going to give it a good fucking shot. So I really wish them all the fucking best yeah. in the world. And I yeah. hope everything goes as well as it should. And on that, we have covered the month of August. And thanks to Adrian for coming on again. And Metal Messiah Radio is live tonight. Are you, are you going to be doing the whole fucking Metal Messiah Radio thing tonight? You will be, yeah? Yeah, uh, baby who I have um, Sky Pilots, Snowblind, The Vicious Head Society, and Balor. Oh, very good. Cool, yeah. I do. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. And we'll be back again next month, and if you met us at the end, fair fucking play it to you. Like, share, and subscribe, and all the rest will leave a comment or whatever. And thank you very much to everyone, and thank you to Adrian. And there, John. another stellar month for the Irish scene, and we'll be back again next month. All right. Hails or something. Should we say hails or no, no, no? I, I...